Wisteria. Energy. 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 Twist. Hello everyone and welcome back to Ghost Stories of Essex. This is the devil dog of Ingatestone and others. However, you might be thinking it's something like a black shook. You'll be surprised to learn what the devil dog actually is. He had a menacing, unblinking stare. His eyes brown and shiny as humbugs. And there was something in the set of that powerful jaw that said, Here comes danger. Fought most of the dogs in the neighbourhood, he did. Killed some of them too, volunteered the landlord. And some of the cats. A Staffordshire Bull Terrier he was. No animal ever got the better of him. Standing there in the bar of the Old Star Inn at Ingatestone. Tentatively, I stretched a hand out to stroke the smooth head. It didn't require any great show of bravery. It was quite safe, for it is many a long day since the devil dog of Ingatestone earned his fearsome reputation. Thanks to the taxidermist's art, his head is mounted above the bar where once he lorded it over lesser creatures. According to J. Wentworth Day, the writer of many stories about Essex, and a star pub regular, the dog lived at the inn from about 1900 to 1914. He would have gone for anything, from a man to even a bull. He was one of the survivors of the old breed of bulldogs, related day, and went on to say that, Although this lion-hearted superdog is now no more, many of the star's old patrons can vouch for the fact his spirit lingered on long after his death. Leslie Smith, who was the landlord when Day was writing for the Essex Countryside magazine. This was in 1976, some time ago. And she did have something to say on the subject. It happened 17 years ago, when I first took the house over. I came down the lane, opened the side door, and my old dog pushed in ahead of me. It's a narrow, dark little passage and leads straight into the bar. The moment my dog set foot in the passage, she growled, and up went her bristles like a hedgehog. She was dead scared. I stood stock still. I couldn't see a thing. But I have the oddest feeling in the world. I know there was something there. Not a yard in front of me, which was challenging the dog and me. It was trying to stop us entering the house. I knew instinctively it was the spirit of a dog. One could almost see it. Black, squatty teeth bared, blazing with heat. Just about to jump and get my dog by the throat or me by the leg. Then I moved forward. The dog scuttled back behind my legs and the spell was broken. Apparently this was not an isolated isolated incident. Other dogs would growl, their hackles up, sensing the hostility of an unseen enemy who apparently still had the power to intimidate, although he had been long gone from his former haunts. The devil dog of Ingotstone was once a flesh and blood creature. Not so, however, those legendary spectral beasts which roam many a country road or coastal path, big as a car, their eyes red blazing like bicycle lamps in the gloom. Some say the origin of these fearsome creatures is the Hound of Odin, um, a denizen of the underworld dating back to the Viking invasion, whose many names throughout the country show how widespread is the belief in the existence of the terrifying black dog. In East Anglia, he is the Galitrot Shook, or Shock, from the old word Skuka, a demon or Satan, and in Norfolk they call him the Snarly Owl. In the north he is Trash, Shriker or the Padfoot, and on the Isle of Man they have the Mouth Dog. In Wales the Dog of Darkness is called And let me try and pronounce this. Are you ready? 
Gil Gay. And in Yorkshire, he is the bar guest. Hmm. Most of these canine apparitions are believed to be an omen of death, usually to the person, unfortunate enough to sort of encounter them. On the Dartmoor, on, well, the B3212, between two bridges and Post Bridge, an area where there are various supernatural hazards for the traveller to encounter. One of the worst possibilities is to be haunted by the devil and his pack of hellhounds snorting fire as they howl hideously in the pursuit. There are black dog stories in Suffolk, Norfolk, Cambridge, and not surprisingly nearby Essex. Yes, it's got its own encounters with Black Shook between the village and the church in Hockley, north of Rayleigh. There is a stretch of road best avoided on misty nights where a huge spectral hound has frequently been seen padding noisily along. The B1026 Coast Road, along by the Blackwater Eastery, is another of the black dog's haunts, and one summer day in 1960, a cyclist was pedalling northwards along there as daylight was fading. He had passed the tallest hunt de Arce, when he noticed a large black dog panting alongside. It ran, and after a while the man swerved his bicycle towards the dog and jumped down hoping to drive it off. But as he looked round for the menacing companion, to his amazement he found he was alone. There was absolutely no sign of the dog, which had vanished into thin air, and he was uneasily conscious of a strange oppressive atmosphere. He stopped for a drink at the nearest pub and mentioned what had happened, but the locals did not seem surprised, and one old man told him he was a fool to ride along that, that road at dusk. In such an area, there's a long history of these happenings. Apparently, he was not the first to encounter the mysterious black hound, and no doubt will not be the last. In this particular area between Peldon and Tolls Hunt de seems to be a favourite track of the black dog, and Jay Wentworth Day reported in his Essex Ghost Book something about this. The gamekeeper, which he knew, called William Fell, had a terrifying encounter when he and a friend were driving in a horse and trap towards Gisner's Court. Near the Salcott crossroads, they suddenly noticed an enormous black dog, its huge red tongue hanging from its mouth. He described it as big as a car with eyes like bike lamps and so tall that its head was level with the floorboards of the cart. To their alarm it kept following the cart for about half a mile then disappeared as suddenly as it arrived. A similar encounter happened in the 1920s to a young girl who lived in Tolson de Arce who was sent one frosty moonlit winter night to fetch the midwife from Tolsbury. She just cycled past Jordan's green when a huge black dog, his head level with her handlebars, appeared alongside. She felt cold with fear, the hair rising on the back of her neck as the animal kept pace with her, so close that she could have reached out and touched its rough shaggy coat. Then when she reached Seabrook's lane, it disappeared. On the way back to her relief, the road seemed clear, but at Gorwell Hall Lane, there it was, lying in the middle of the road. It seemed to be asleep, its bright red tongue hanging out of its mouth, and it was so big it left only a small space where she could pass. But she managed to slip by without disturbing it, and cycle home as fast as she could. Inquiries in the area failed to discover every, anyone who owned such a dog, and it was many years later that she read about Black Shuck and realised what she'd seen. So what should you do if you meet the Black Dog? Despite the widespread belief that to encounter the supernatural beast is the equivalent of a death warrant, others say that if you show no fear to the dog, it will simply walk along you or behind you, its huge paws making no sound. But on no account try to run away. There are even brave souls who have attempted to pat the creature, at which point he is said to simply disappear. There is another unlikely animal to be seen in Essex. It's known as a shug monkey. Travellers report its 
sudden appearance in car headlights on the B1052, Newmarket to Saffron Walden Road. And if you want to see it, the best place is the stretch between West Ratting and Balsham, just north of the Essex border. In a little used lane called Slough Hill, people who have seen it describe it as having the body of a large black shaggy sheepdog, the face of the monkey with big shining eyes. Sometimes it has been seen walking erect, at others it lopes along on all fours at great speed. Another curious dog story comes from the old White Hart Inn at West Mercy, where a few years ago, a cellar man attending to the beer casks almost fell over a dog, which he thought was one of the landlord's pets. He asked the landlord to call it off, but the landlord's two dogs were up in the lounge. When the cellar man looked round, the mysterious dog simply vanished. The same thing did happen later as well, to another cellar man who was checking the barrels. He saw a black dog in the cellar and thought a stray must have come in, but the cellar door was still closed, and he had left it. When he looked round, the dog had gone, although there was no other way out. There is an old belief that a tunnel runs from the pub cellar to the nearby churchyard, which must have been handy in smuggling days. In times gone by, an animal was sometimes sacrificed and buried under the foundations of a building, so that its spirit it would sort of act as a guardian, basically, and protect and, you know, stop evil influences. It is too far-fetched to wonder if such a dog travels sometimes from the churchyard through the tunnel to pay the wide heart a visit. What do you think? Do you think it does? Or was it our old friend Black Shook? It's only a short distance from his usual beat after all. And that is the actual story of the devil dog. And I would just like to say, firstly, the devil dog here it's talking about is one in a pub that used to live there. And it's a, well, it's a bulldog, basically. And, you know, it's the old red type, so it's a big dog. The other ones are said to be guardians of some sort. Well, some people believe them to be guardians of sacred areas. And some people believe them to be omens and you only see them when death is coming. However, when you actually look at all the encounters and, you know, you put things together, it does seem more like this black shook is a guardian. And if you're okay with the black shook and you don't run and you don't show no fear, usually it lets you pass by absolutely fine. So I don't think it's so much as a bad omen. I think it's protecting something that is meant to protect, that's all. But what do you guys think? Let me know. Thanks for listening and many blessings. Wisteria, Wisteria. Wisteria. Energy. 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 Twister. 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 Twister.